allow me to tell you a short story from my life. As some people know, when you're practically an infant, your consciousness isn't exactly all there. Yay! Great. Only appearing in certain circumstances that are usually embarrassing. At least from the stories that I heard. But for me, it was different. When my consciousness came, the first thing I saw was video games. When this happened, the very first game I ever played and was introduced to was Frogger on the PS1. But my sister broke the disc, and uh, that was fun. The second game I played was, well, what we're talking about now, God of War. When I played this game for the first time, there was just so much stuff happening in the game that my five-year-old brain couldn't comprehend. Hydras, Medusas, Cyclops, this one sailor guy that became a running gag in the first two God of War games, Minotaurs, Titans, the list goes on and I absolutely loved it. Especially the sex mini games. Not because of, well, you know what, but because every time anyone comes to our house to visit, they would be mortified because I was playing it. But I didn't care because at the same time, I didn't know what was happening. So I would just sit there with a shit-eating grin as moaning was happening in the background. So that was, that was fun. The point is, I practically grew up with this game. And as I got older, I focused not just on the gameplay, but the story and characters with it. And what I realized is that Kratos, as a character, is very, 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 very angry at gods. With that in mind, I was very shocked when this God of War came out, the 2018 version, not the 2005 one. The greatest I previously played as, who would pop a blood vessel every time he heard the word God, was now this chill guy with a lumberjack beard that wouldn't hurt a fly. Kind of. Also, he had a son. He would then go on his adventure with his son, Boy, trademark, to spread his wife's ashes on the top of a mountain, cause, well, why not? And over time, their father-son bond would grow, until Boy, trademark, develops a literal god complex and acts like a complete jackass, but that never happened if you ask me. This was a very good game, and it would have been amazing, however, someone at Santa Monica got lazy and started copy and pasting the same bosses and called it a day. However, in this new installment, it was completely different. As you progress through the game, you no longer have to worry about lack of variety when it comes to enemies. Now we have wyverns, light elves, raiders, centaurs, these weird tiger slash deer, I don't know what they are. Not to mention, we finally got different mini bosses. We have light elf elites, frost and flame phantoms, etc. And remember the Valkyries from the last game? They were cool and all, but they all had the same attacks. But now, we have berserkers. Each of them are now different with their own gimmicks. However, I never really found them all because I played on the maximum difficulty, and we all know where that went. But even though I kept dying over and over again, I still enjoyed the game. In fact, I think people should play it on the maximum difficulty for two reasons. One is, well, they do a lot more damage and second reason is that they become enraged you see their health their health comes in five different colors green yellow orange purple and red left to right on how tough they are the higher this goes the more damage defense and shield breaks are unparable moves they can do so in order to deal with this you have to explore and get stronger and eventually you can come back and whoop some serious ass speaking of ass whooping the combat the moves are basically the same as the last game but this time you get a spear that allows you to attack a lot faster actually there is one thing that is is different. They increase the chance of getting these quick time or execution events. And they are really violent. You can wrap your chains around their heads and decapitate them, use their own swords and cut them in half, or cut their limbs off and let them bleed out, snap their necks, literally stab them with their own bow. You get the idea. And if you played on the hardest difficulty, you will be constantly switching out weapons. For some people, they may find that annoying, but when you have an upgrade system, you don't want to disregard a single one of them. That and the potential to do an endless combo until they're dead. Enough about the combat, let's talk about the side missions. I feel like, in my personal opinion, if you want to appreciate the world and characters more, I feel like you have to do side missions. The missions vary from severing Freya's bond with Odin, to fetching a chew toy for a weird pig pug thing. Once you complete the missions, you know more about the lore and more dialogue between the characters. I think my favorite piece of dialogue is when Mimir tells a pun to Kratos and his response is, you're not funny. Would you look at that? Freya's gift endures after all, or should I say, his presence. You are not funny. Alright, what's left to talk about? Oh yeah, the main story. The thing about God of War 2018 was how captivating the story really was, so I never thought that they could improve on the story any more than they could. 
but I was completely wrong. Three years after the events of God of War, we see how Kratos and his son are dealing with Fimmelwinter. His son, who is no longer called Boy, is now Atreus, is a lot more older, and Kratos is, well, Kratos. After the death of their wolf, Atreus argues with his father about them hiding in the woods. He wants to discover who Loki is, but Kratos wants him to train to prepare for when he eventually dies. After finding a bear that just so happened to be Atreus, they're immediately greeted by Thor and Odin. The tension between everyone was high. The awful stories we heard from the two are now sitting at the table and we're just waiting for them to lash out from anger. After Odin revealed that Atreus was looking for Tyr, trust between them starts to waver. Over time, Kratos questions and argues with Atreus for the action he takes until eventually he chases him away. Kratos has never really experienced his own child finally growing up and becoming independent for themselves because you know. He's afraid of being alone because he might turn into the monster he once was. Even though they end up fighting with his dad, Atreus comforts him and makes sure he will be okay when he eventually leaves. But it's not just their story. There are other characters who have gripping stories as well. Freya, after the last game, is still dealing with the loss of her son and the amount of pain Odin caused her. Tyr, who was this great savior to everyone, has turned into a broken shell of a man after Odin tortures him. Angerboda finally meeting one of her kind after being alone for so long, and Thor. Thor has probably the saddest story. The reason why Thor, in my opinion, has done all this terrible stuff was to earn the respect of his father. Instead, his father insults him and belittles him and his dead sons, calling him a monster or a destroyer. To cope with his father abusing him as a tool, he goes to a tavern and drinks until he's completely drunk. His family tries to comfort him and make him realize that his dad is just a complete dickhead, but they can't seem to convince him until he meets a person who was just a bigger monster than he was that changed for the sake of his child. Kratos and Thor may be the same in many ways, but the difference between the both of them is that one stood up to his father and the other didn't. And when he finally stood up to him, it was too late. I absolutely enjoyed this game. It perfectly shows the relationship between parents and their children, the loss of a child, the children becoming independent, and the actors did a wonderful job. All in all, I give God of War Ragnarok a 10 out of 10. And if you disagree, remember, I've played all the God of War games, so my opinion stands out more than others. Yeah, that's about it for the video. Okay, bye.